Um, when people tell me I love shopping, my gosh, that is just an echo of me for years. I love shopping. I shopped all the time. I loved getting a deal. I mm-hmm. loved finding new things. Yeah. But really what I loved about it is that it eased the stress and tension of something else, even if I couldn't identify what it was. So it was really more like this numbing technique. So it could have been going for a glass of wine, but it was going to buy a new dress and then having a glass of wine. Yeah, <laughs> like, absolutely. I, I wanted to shut down the day or shut down some bad news or get rid of the pain of doing a job that I didn't enjoy, whatever it was. And it was such an easy way to blow off steam. And I didn't realize how stressful it was later. Welcome to the Minimal Mom Podcast. Dawn reaches a million women each month with practical tips to simplify your home. Today, Dawn is joined by Courtney Carver. Courtney is the author of the best-selling book, Project 333, the minimalist fashion challenge that proves less is really so much more, where she introduces the concept of a minimalist wardrobe to simplify and enhance personal style. With a passion for helping individuals embrace a minimalist and intentional lifestyle, Courtney has become a leading voice in the simplicity movement. Well, Courtney, you're well known for Project 333, where you encourage uh, everyone to have 33 items of clothing for three months. And we are definitely going to talk about that today, along with um, some other ideas, how we just need to give ourselves a break when it comes to managing all this stuff. But I have a I have a theory. I have this idea I want to run by you. If anyone is listening right now and they have piles of cloth- clothing on their floor, strewn about their bedroom anywhere, draped over a chair, laundry baskets of clothing that have not been put away. Maybe it's that like random mixture of some are clean, some are dirty. (laughs) And like um, you have seasonal clothes you haven't switched out. You have clothes in your closet that don't fit. They're maybe too big, too small. But if, if any way in your home right now, if you just looked around your bedroom, your clothes are not in order what I'm thinking is that then maybe you don't get the privilege right now of having a large wardrobe. Maybe you need to like tell yourself for this season, it doesn't have to be forever. For this season, I might have to try out like significantly limiting my wardrobe because apparently I'm not, I don't have the capacity right now to manage a lot of clothing. So do you think that could be like a, like an idea that maybe we could run with? I don't know. I mean, I love that angle and it's actually being really introspective as and like kind of looking around for the signs and signals that are saying whoa too much is going on in this category of my life and even though it's clothes something that we all have to wear every single day perhaps we could give ourselves a break just in this one area and see if it might alleviate some tension in other areas so i love that uh, and I love what you mentioned about the chair. I've heard people call that the chair drobe. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes. If I think if, most of us have moved the treadmills out. Like we just realized how can, ridiculous that is. <laughs> I don't see as many treadmills with things hanging on it anymore. But like for sure, any if you have a chair, bench, any any like piece of furniture, um, it tends to get covered. And so I love this idea. So I have championed your idea of Project 333 for years now because – what I've heard that is, uh, as adults, American adults, we make around 35,000 decisions a day, remotely conscious decisions. So 35,000 decisions a day. Um, and I, as I look through my day and I look at what are areas that I could reduce the amount of decisions that I have to make and kind of automate more decisions, I feel like our wardrobes can be a really logical place to reduce the number of decisions. Sure. I mean, it's the reason why we get so upset when someone says what's for dinner. Like by then, (laughs) we've already made all these decisions all day long and we don't want to think about what is for dinner. Yeah. Um, But clothes for sure. So we have, I think, generally speaking, this habit of getting new things for every season, every event, every new year, every time we change our mind or our body changes or whatever it is. And instead of releasing the other things, we just keep adding and adding and adding. And I'm not suggesting that we're consistently like adding and releasing, adding and releasing, like finding that core wardrobe that really works for you, I think is so helpful. But it's not just the clothes that are strewn about the house or on the chair. When we look in our closet, we're only wearing 
20 percent of what's in there probably <laughs> everyone's already doing project 333 yes, they, they give you such a hard time about it but actually most people are already doing it but what's happening is we're like torturing ourselves because the other 80 percent of those clothes are as we pick our clothing they're saying like hey you paid too much for me hey you don't fit i don't fit you anymore hey whatever it is they're telling us like it's very loud. I remember being feeling kind of stressed out, like low level stressed out after getting ready in the morning. And I didn't know why. And even though I wasn't expecting this, once those other items were gone, I felt so much better. Yeah. So what, how would you describe that after you really got your closet simplified? And what do you hear from other women? Like, how does that change getting dressed and how they feel about themselves and their clothing? Well, at first it's, I think the important thing to remember is that Project 333 is a challenge or an experiment. So it's a way to be curious about how these things are impacting our lives. And at first, I think we have a lot of nervousness around it. Like, are people going to notice that I'm wearing the, thing, the same things? Am I going to get bored wearing the same things? Um, is this going to work at all? But very quickly, your mornings get easier because you're picking from your favorite things. Yeah. And even if it's not the perfect capsule wardrobe, I mean, who cares? I, I'm not about that at all because as soon as we think something's perfect, something changes so that it's not. We wash it, we spill something on it, um, the trends change, whatever it is. So really focusing on what you enjoy wearing is so important. And then figuring it out from there and noticing those benefits. You know, my mornings are easier. I'm saving money. I'm not worried about the latest sale at my favorite store because I know that for these three months, I'm just working with what I have and I'm giving my brain a break from even thinking about any of these things and let's see what happens. And then at the end of the three months, I mean, for me, it was really revolutionary. I thought it was going to be this three month fun thing and then we'd get on with it. And now it's been almost 14 years and I still dress with 33 items or less every three months. Yeah. yeah, that's so cool. I, when I really first undertook like really streamlining my wardrobe and, um, and I decided kind of early on that I was going to create, you know, a uniform of just a black top and, and jeans because of the season I was in, I've expanded it a little bit since then. What really surprised me was how much I had been compromising in the clothing I was wearing, how many times I would like get something on clearance at Target because it did look more current and like it kind of fit the current uh, trends, but often it didn't fit right. It didn't fit well. It wasn't the best thing for my body. I was just trying to kind of mimic what was going on. And so when I really said, no, I am just going to have this rule that everything in my closet right now fits and I feel good in it, no matter what shape or size I am. It does not matter what I hope to be down the road. Like for today, I am just going to have clothes that fit and I feel good in. I could not believe how much better I felt about myself, how all of a sudden it was okay. I mean, we can all have goals. Who cares? Like what we want to be in the future. That's great. But for today, I can't lose 20 pounds in one day, right? Like, so for today to say, no, today I, I'm worthy of having clothes that fit and I feel good in, that was a huge shift for me. And I didn't expect it to be, to make as big of a difference maybe as it did to like have so much more confidence in myself to feel better. No matter where I was going, I wasn't adjusting things. I didn't feel like I had to suck in or sit a certain way or, you know, uh, like I couldn't believe how much freedom that gave me and how much better I felt about myself. I mean, look, if that's the only benefit of yeah. dressing with fewer items, that's enough. Yeah. And then my room stayed cleaner. I take better care of my clothes. Like I just, I, I was always a, a chair draper with my clothes. I never put my clothes away, right? Um, and now I just like very naturally put my clothes away because I, I take better care of them because I only have a few pieces. Um, I launder them in a timely manner and it's... Uh, it's brought so much freedom and definitely, definitely keeps my room cleaner too. And I just don't feel like I'm dedicating unnecessary brain energy to something that is important, but, but not super important. Sure. And it takes, like you said, it takes no time to then put away the things because there aren't as many things. And then that has this ripple effect, I think, throughout the house. Like it's so easy for me to pick up because there aren't a lot of things. And for someone like me who is not very organized, if I have too much stuff, 
I'm bound to lose something, be frustrated with something and just not enjoy it as I should. Yeah. So let's go, well, real quick, I'll have you recap what Project 333 is for those who aren't as familiar with it. And then let's go through some of the objections because I know <laughs> like there's most people, my, my weightlifting lifting coach used to say, any excuse will do. I know we can come up with all the excuses why this won't work for our particular situation, but Courtney has heard it all. <laughs> so, <laughs> so real quick recap it for us and then we'll start going through some of those. Sure. So Project 333 is a challenge or an experiment where for three months you dress with 33 items or less, including clothing, uh, accessories, jewelry, and shoes. And you don't count things like underwear, sleepwear, uh, and not even workout wear, unless your workout wear isn't working out. So then it's part of your daily wardrobe. But for instance, I'm going to take a Pilates class later this afternoon, and then I'm going to stop by the grocery store. I'm not going to count those items in my 33 because okay. then I'm coming right home. Um, but if I were wearing my, like, I don't know, leggings and sports top all day long, then I would count it in my 33 items. And I don't have a problem with that. I mean, especially after what was 2020 and on, we're all wearing more comfortable clothes, thank goodness. Uh, so it can really be whatever you want. And even though you and I are both in black shirts right now, um, I've seen really great examples of very colorful or patterned or striped wardrobes that work for 33 items. Yes. And that is one common misconception is, hey, like I like to show my personality through my clothing. I like to be a little more current with trends. And I have actually worked in some more color <laughs> to my wardrobe now, but this is still my easiest like go-to on a day when I'm in a hurry. But for those who are saying, but I enjoy fashion, I like to have, I mean, because our clothes really do say a lot about ourselves. It's one of the first impressions people get from us before we speak when we're walking up. So I, I fully understand how it does say a lot about us. So how do we still keep our personality within 33 items? I mean, I think it does and it doesn't because I don't remember what anyone, any person I saw yesterday, I really at this moment don't remember what they were wearing. <laughs> like nobody that I saw at the store, nobody that I saw in my, that I know, it just doesn't stand out as an important factor to me. But I do understand that like expression quality of clothing. And I used to always say that I love to be creative in my wardrobe. But what I noticed is, you know, just like decision making, we only have a certain amount of creative energy every day. And sorry, I'm not going to pour it into my wardrobe. I'm going to pour it into writing, creating in other ways. Um, I It just works so much better for me. It was like, I just kind of diverted all of that creative energy, even though sometimes I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll wear a scarf today. It's not like, does this necklace go with these shoes? It's whatever, I, but I get it. I understand that for some people that's more important and same for the shopping thing that you mentioned. Um, when people tell me I love shopping, my gosh, that is just an echo of me for years. I love shopping. I shopped all the time. I loved getting a deal. I loved finding new things. Yeah. But really what I loved about it is that it eased the stress and tension of something else, even if I couldn't identify what it was. So it was really more like this numbing technique. So it could have been going for a glass of wine, but it was going to buy a new dress and then having a glass of wine. Yeah. <laughs> like, Absolutely. I, I wanted to shut down the day or shut down some bad news or get rid of the pain of doing a job that I didn't enjoy, whatever it was. And it was such an easy way to blow off steam. And I didn't realize how stressful it was later when the credit card bill would come. And then I would think, oh, wait. And then I would just block that out and keep going until I finally switched all that around. But um, I didn't love shopping. I loved the relief that I thought shopping gave me. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. And you can still have plenty of personality within 33 items. I think 33 sounds limiting on uh, from the outside, but when you actually start pulling out the pieces you wear and that you enjoy, um, you can, and, and again, you're only committing to it for three months. Like there's still plenty of room to have pieces that are statement pieces or that are more fun and patterned and colorful. Is that, is that true? 
A hundred percent. However, you might want to just go the real simple route the first time around just to figure out what you really do like, mm -hmm. want, need in your wardrobe. Yeah. So you're kind of putting a pause on all of it for three months and just see what that comes out to. Somebody actually did the math on how many outfits you could create, even if you were just changing out something like a necklace or a pair of shoes. And it was, I don't remember the number, but it was over a thousand yeah. outfits. Well, like, yeah. A lot. There's a lot of different combinations. Well, and I know I was visiting with uh, Angela Braniff recently, and she loves to use, she pays for a monthly subscription for, it's not Rent the Runway, but it was another subscription. Maybe newly. Maybe. And I, I was like, okay, how much is it a month, right? And she's like, it was like $77. And I think she got three pieces each month. But she was like, I would spend that on one thing and then I was stuck with it. And I had, she's like, so this, she's like, I have budget for this because she does like to try different, she just loves trying different clothes, seeing how they fit, pairing them with mixing and matching. Um, so she was like, so I budget for this instead of buying new clothes, I, I have my staple pieces and then I get to try out new things every month. And with it, what's cool too is you can rent the same pieces again. So if at the beginning of the summer you're like, oh, I really like this dress a lot, you could rent it for the next three months and have it all summer, you know? Um, and so I was like, well, that's a really great, because most of us, $77, probably that is what we would spend a month easily on buying new clothes or things. And so that could be another option too, I think, for having some variety without being married to all of those pieces. Is. It's a great option. I actually used um, Newly for a vacation that I took oh, last nice. year. Yeah. And I was going to be in a place wearing things that I would never wear in my day to day life. And it was great because you have the items, you're you don't have to figure out how to reuse them. It would be the same, I think, for a formal event, maybe if you didn't want to keep something in your closet to be able to rent something for the occasional wedding or whatever. Yeah. I love that. And you don't even have to wash it. You just send it back dirty. Right. Take exactly. care of it. I was like, well, there, I sold. <laughs> so, no laundry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, a lot of other people will say, okay, I'm tracking along. I see the benefits. But what about seasonal changes, different weather things? Um, you know, how, how, if I'm, if it's in the fall, you know, in Minnesota, we could swing 80 degrees in two days. So how, how does these, these 33 items accommodate that? Sure. Well, let me just say I live in uh, Salt Lake City and we in the past three days have had snow and 20 degrees. And then I think tomorrow it's supposed to be 60 degrees and yeah. then it's supposed to snow on Sunday. <laughs> I get it. it yeah. Weather happens. And I took that into consideration when I picked the number 33 um, because it's still in most cases enough. Now, if it's not, the way around this without just like throwing out the whole challenge is to have a, a little just in case box of a couple of like warmer items that will get you through winter that you may or may not need. But it again, let your brain kind of relax and say, it says, don't worry, we'll be fine. We've got that box that you likely won't open, but maybe you will. And that's okay. You're still going to get something out of it, even if the, the ending number isn't 33. Right. Yeah, you're still going to be way further ahead than than the 833 items that right. you had in your closet <laughs> before. Well, and we probably should clarify too that when you're starting out doing this, it really is an experiment, and you're not you're not being asked to donate everything right away. Like you're you can just pack it away. So worst case, it's 80 degrees in in February. You could go to your packed away clothes and pull out a thing or two too, right? Of course. I mean, it's not a challenge in suffering. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, be comfortable, of course. Uh, but an interesting thing happens when we hide our stuff. I don't know if we've talked about this before. I know we both have individually, but what I've noticed is that if something is hidden out of sight, I will forget about it completely. And then when I go back to it, I have a different relationship with it. It doesn't hold as much emotional connection for me and it's way easier to release. Yeah, that's so good. And so when you uh, when you were paring down your wardrobe and and you've talked about how, you know, every season when you would switch out your next 30 items, then you would reassess the things that you had packed away. Did you decide to sell any of that stuff or mostly did you just donate it? I never sold any clothing, um, mostly because it wasn't 
it just really wasn't worth it for the time and energy that goes into it and the money I would have gotten. I didn't have, you know, thousand dollar pieces that would have <laughs> warranted that kind of energy. Um, so when we were first going through all of our decluttering journey, we made a rule to sell anything that we could get more than fifty dollars for, and I'm not clothes necessarily, but anything in anything. the house. Yeah, and everything else we donated. So we weren't going to do the whole like, let's haggle over this $5 item. Um, but you can have your own number. And again, that's just another way to kind of limit those decisions. So you don't have to make those decisions on every single item. It's like, okay, for each one, this is what we're going to do. Yeah. I love that. And I've, I've heard some gals recently, they're like, you know, I look at marketplace, like, it's just like, it's it's almost easier than donating if you price things right because people will come to your house and get it <laughs> right but you have to price it right and kind of depends where you live and and whatnot but you know if you do want to sell things group it together like in lots of clothing and keep it priced really reasonably and i think marketplace i know when we were decluttering marketplace wasn't a thing and for you either um i do think for those that want to try and recoup a little bit like that can be a good method but if it doesn't sell right away like just just donate it <laughs> be done with it probably. Yeah. Okay. So another thing people will push back is they'll say, but I have a, a, you know, my jobs require different clothes. I'm a, I, I have an office job during the day and then at night I'm a yoga instructor. And then on the weekends I teach cooking classes and I have all these different like wardrobes. So Courtney, how could I possibly pare that down to 33 items? Well, good news. I have a good rule breaking technique, which is if you wear a uniform to any of your jobs, only count all of the uniforms as one item. So that really helps. And I think the other thing is, so I was working a full-time job when I started Project 333, and I didn't tell anyone who I worked with that I was doing it. And it was very, you know, client facing, working with other people on my team. And I just dressed up my workwear about 10% and, or sorry, dressed it down. And then I dressed up my out of workwear about 10%. And I know this isn't exact math, but you know what I mean? Like instead of wearing a full suit, I was wearing a blazer with a, a shirt or something like yeah, that. Yeah. And then I could wear that out of my job as well. And again, it was just to kind of bridge the gap for those three months so I could decide how, what I wanted to do with what I was wearing. And I think it's a lot easier now. I think that there is more room for wearing what you want, unless you're in that uniform situation, not having to overdo it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's really good. I am continually a surprise. surprise. We do, uh, in our mentorship group, we go through wardrobes, I mean, quarterly, uh, for sure. And I always point people to project 333 because Aww, it gives you guidelines. Uh, a lot of women do well with like a set number, like just tell me how many <laughs> to have, but always the testimonies, every time we go through it, women are just like, I like, why was I doing this to myself before? Why was I walking up to this closet that had a gazillion options? Well, no, not even a gazillion options because a lot of the stuff didn't even fit or wasn't appropriate for what I was needing to get dressed for. Like, why did I have all of this clutter surrounding my actual options for the day? And when you can simplify it and you just walk up and the only thing you see is something that you can, like is an option for today, it, it just gives us so much peace of mind. And uh, it's always fun to hear other women say this. So um, I, I don't think I've met anyone who was like, no, I did it and I hated it. Like it was the worst ever. Give me all my clothes back. So I'm sure it's happened. <laughs> probably. Some might say, oh, I counted and I have 54 items. But still, again, we're still so much less than where we were before. So let's broaden the scope of our conversation a little bit. I love following you on Instagram because uh, you're always giving us permission to – take on less, to do less, to manage less, to make more time for ourselves and for rest and to to value that. So what encouragement would you have for women today who are just feeling so overwhelmed and anxious and stressed and tired right now? I don't know a lot of women who aren't feeling that um, actually uh, in my personal life and on my Instagram life. Uh, so I think it's a really important thing to talk about. If we don't prioritize rest, if we don't set limits for ourselves, and if we don't 
figure out ways to take care and sometimes even step back and step out of the busyness, the overwhelm that's coming from around us, we're just really hurting ourselves long term. I mean, that's that's the only way I can think about it. And I understand that there are phases of life and situations that come up where it is just, there's no way out but through. Um, but there's still a little bit of room to be gentler with ourselves. Because what happens, I think, when we're very overwhelmed, we're, we get really mean to ourselves. Like, oh, yeah. we're like, you can't do this better. What's wrong yeah. with you? How did you yeah. end up in this situation? Or how mm-hmm. did you end up in this situation again? Yeah. Uh, and then, so we have all of our internal stuff going on. And then we have all of the stuff on Instagram, for instance, or social media or the news or around us um, just in our day-to-day lives that it is too much. So like remove social media and, and all of the internet from our lives. I mean, for a minute, which is how I grew up. And even in my twenties, I mean, I was still feeling some overwhelm and I didn't have that whole extra layer of yes, great connection. I mean, we're talking right now because of the internet. Thank you. However, we have to set limits just like with our clothes. We have to do it in other areas of our life. And I think the first step is building in time to rest, not when we're tired, but as often as we can. Yeah, no, that's so good. And I've been thinking a lot lately too of, you know, so much in our life is outside of our control, but our physical environment for most of us, we do have control over that. And so controlling what we can, and well, the serenity prayer, right? Uh, let it, but, but really looking at our physical environment now that we do know how much it plays into our stress levels and how we're feeling in our own home. Now, don't get me wrong. It's a lot of work to declutter our house and to, to simplify it, but how we we can rest so much more easily in a in a place that is simplified and for now that might look like clearing out one corner of your bedroom with a chair where you can sit and read or something you know you don't have to have your whole house simplified to be able to create a restful place in it do you think no i i think you could actually start by creating that restful space even if everything else is feeling like kind of a disaster, at least you have this little sanctuary to retreat to, whether that's, you know, a little corner of your couch or your bedroom or in, in the office, whatever, wherever it is to just have that space to inspire those other spaces and also to relax. I hear a lot of people go sit in their cars sometimes, Yeah, Yeah, that's true. (laughs) do it like whatever you need. Don't wait until you're clutter-free, debt-free, whatever it is, because it needs to happen first. Yeah. No, that's so good. I've also recently, I made a rule uh, for social media because I think it's not, if we're like, you can't go on it, don't go on Instagram, don't do this, right? Like that doesn't work for most of us. But uh, I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to have the rule. I don't go on social media in bed. So if I want to sit in my chair in my room and do it, if I want to sit on the couch and do it, that's fine. I can do that. But no social media in bed. And I like to read books before bed just to unwind my brain and to be able to go to sleep. But I had gotten in the habit of going on Instagram before bed. And I'm like, ugh, like, you know, like afterwards, you don't feel better generally (laughs) about yourself, right? And so I'm like, so I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to create this rule for myself. Like, Instagram doesn't have to be horrible. I can still go on it when I want to, but just not in bed. And that made such a big difference. And now overall throughout my day, I find that I'm just really not going on it that frequently. So it, I think there can be some small changes where, we're, again, we're not beating ourselves up. We're not saying, wow, you waste so much time on social media. You're horrible. It's just like, okay, well, I'm just going to make this small adjustment or I'm going to reward myself with it. If I spend five minutes picking up, then I can have five minutes guilt-free of social media too. And so some small changes, I think, what have been successful for you for keeping that in check in, in your life? Yeah. Well, I love the idea of phone free zones, whether it's a space or a time, like, you know, from after seven or before 10 or whatever it is that works best for you. Um, I experimented with an app called one sec and that really worked because every time you will log on to Instagram, for instance, this picture comes up and it starts counting down and encourages you to breathe for a second. 
You have no idea, or no, maybe it's, you don't know what it is. It's like one second. It's a long time to wait to get to that place <laughs> that you're so used to accessing yeah. easily. Yeah. And it became such of this little piece of friction for me that I just wasn't really interested in going through that. I also think, um, I don't do it now, but in the past I've put actually something on my phone physically, like a, a hairband or a post-it note. So there's, it's not just this like mindless swiping and then I'm looking at what I don't need to be here. And then I also cleared my whole home screen. There's no, you don't see any apps. Like you have to actually go into a folder to see it because I would tell myself I was checking the time. And then I was like, but also this looks really fun. Um, and then I just watched for like, what's really holding my attention and something like TikTok, for instance, really just ate me up and I could stay there for a long time. And so I went off TikTok in July and was just going to take an, a, a month long experiment and never went back because I mean, very entertaining, uh -huh. but well, they know what they're doing to get you hooked into <laughs> on TikTok. <laughs> yeah. But it's just like watching TV somewhere else in my mind. So I'm like, why do I want to do that? I'd rather spend this time doing other things. And if I figure out a way to create for TikTok, I might consider it, but otherwise I probably won't go back. Yeah. Yeah. It's just recognizing again, what season am I in, in what am I just, you know, maybe other seasons I could have TikTok and I can manage it fine and I don't get sucked in for long, but maybe in the season I'm in right now, I'm like, I don't even have the capacity to parent myself with that or to control it. Right. Because it just, I I'm looking for an escape and it's there. Right. So I have to find right. other ways to do that. So noticing that intention, like, is this is scrolling my new shopping? Why am I bouncing around this? Is there another way for me to take care of myself that feels better and is actually like real self-care? Yeah. And I know, I mean, often I go to social media when I'm feeling lonely or I'm looking for human connection. Like that's that's not wrong, right? But again, it's like, okay, well, have I not connected with any of my in-person friends or people lately? And again, that's not always you easy either. Like, um, I don't know, like we'd like to be like, oh, just go make friends. And like, that's so easy, but like, that's not always easy either. It's true. It's all very adulty and challenging for sure. Um, I think sometimes like sending a letter or a postcard is really fulfilling when you don't have that capacity to have a phone conversation, but you want to stay connected and it just, I don't know. It feels good to be able to do it. And it's not another email that somebody has to check. And it doesn't take a lot of extra energy, especially if you have like just next time you're near the post office, get some stamps and some cards, and then you have them on hand. Um, and it makes you feel a little bit better. And it's also has nothing to do with the computer <laughs> or yeah. the internet. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, Courtney, thank you so much for visiting today. We will link to, I, you're a great follow on Instagram. I love, like Thanks. it's, I, I try, I keep my feed pretty curated, um, but man, you're, you're always encouraging there. So we'll definitely link to your Instagram, your books, Project 333. And it's, it's these little things, right? These things we can control. You can control the size of your wardrobe. You can control, um, you know, put making, putting some friction in place for things that you tend to lose track of time on. So do you have any other encouragement as we as we end today? No, I think this was great. I mean, I love thinking about the things that are within my control. And then also the only other thing that's in my control with the things that are out of my control is my response and reaction. And so usually just a good pause, it helps a lot. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you're looking for more support, be sure to check out The Minimal Mom on YouTube, too. And we'll see you next time.